If you've been following the medical news in the UK, then you may have seen that there is a lot of debate surrounding MAPs and PAs and the clashes with junior doctors and other physicians. My name is Tria and I'm a junior doctor working in London. In this video, I want to explain about what is going on and why there is such a debate. Medical associate professions or MAPs include physician associates or PAs, surgical care practitioners, SCPs, and anesthesia associates or AAs. Let's start by talking about what are MAPs. Like I said, medical associate professions are a group of allied healthcare workers. Now the majority of the literature and the majority of the focus from the news comes on to PAs, which are physician associates. Now these MAPs are generalist healthcare professionals with postgraduate qualifications who are trained to provide medical care as part of the multidisciplinary team. They are considered dependent practitioners who can work under the supervision of a specified medical practitioner, but can also, to some extent, work autonomously with appropriate support. MAPs and PAs have been around in other countries for several decades, for example in the USA, but they were first introduced in the UK in 2003 as a potential solution to a workforce crisis in the NHS. So the aim of introducing physician associates and MAPs was to help provide care in places and departments that lacked doctors. So they were only introduced in the NHS in the early 2000s, but since then, within the UK, their numbers have grown significantly. As of June 2023, there are over 1,500 PAs working in the NHS and around 77 AAs. So let's talk about how you become a PA. So within the UK, in order to become a PA, you first have to complete an undergraduate degree, which is usually, but doesn't always have to be, in a science-related subject, such as biomedical sciences. Then you have to complete a two-year postgraduate course, which is a Master's in Physician Associate Studies. So within the NHS currently, there are physician associates and MAPs in several areas of healthcare, for example, in primary care, in community settings, in hospitals, in a es and in wards as well. PAs are involved in several aspects of care in the UK, including assessing patients, carrying out diagnostic and therapeutic procedures, interpreting studies, coming up with differential diagnoses for patients, and also carrying out treatment and management plans. So let's talk about the differences between being a doctor and being a physician associate. Firstly, it's the way that they study. So as I explained, PAs will have an undergraduate degree, which could be in any subject, usually a science subject, and then a two years master's course, which is specifically um, related to physician associate studies. Whereas doctors who have trained in the UK generally complete an undergraduate course, which is five or six years long, where you end up with a medical degree, which in the UK is usually an MBBS or a BMBCH. So doctors and physician associates may be involved in patient care in a very similar way. So this would be assessing patients and treating them. But one of the main differences with PAs in the UK is that PAs, as it stands, cannot prescribe any medications or order any investigations which have ionizing radiation. So this includes things like chest x-rays, abdominal x-rays and CT scans. Whereas doctors are able to prescribe medicines and prescribe ionizing radiation as well. Now junior doctors typically do work underneath a supervisor, for example a registrar or a consultant, but they are not always going to be dependent practitioners because they will have scope to practice independently as they become more experienced and senior. For doctors, there are clear paths for career progression. For example, if you are in a training program and usually progress up the ranks from a very junior doctor, which may be called a house officer or a senior house officer, to a registrar level, and then as you become more senior, you'll become a consultant. Whereas at the moment for PAs in the UK, there isn't a very clear progression in terms of career options. So that was a little bit about how PAs and MAPs work within the NHS. In recent months, there has been a lot of debate in online forums and in the media about PAs and junior doctors, especially with a lot of the potential risks associated with PAs and MAPs. So what I'm going to do now is break down some of the benefits and some of the potential risks associated with PAs and MAPs. Let's start with the pros. There have been several studies conducted about physician associates and MAPs in the UK and also in other countries such as the USA. 
Generally, the scientific literature around PAs shows that they are safe and that they come with several benefits when integrated into the healthcare workforce. For example, MAPs are generally seen to have comparable levels of safety to that of a doctor. Some of the benefits include contributing to continuity of care for the teams of healthcare workers themselves and also the patients. Now, one of the reasons why this is the case is that PAs and MAPs often work in hours so that means Monday to Friday, nine to five, and are not rotational. So they will be in one department for a long amount of time, maybe even a permanent contract. Whereas this is very different to how junior doctors train because junior doctors generally rotate between different wards and different specialties. In that respect, as a permanent member of staff, they can be seen as useful to provide continuity of care to the staff members because they know the department, they know how things work, and also to patients because they have met the patients several times. The benefits of MAPS include improving patient experiences. Now, another one of the important benefits of MAPS, and one of the reasons why they were integrated into the workforce in the first place, was to help support the existing healthcare staff with their workload and share the burden, in a sense to help in areas that are particularly deprived of healthcare workers. Theoretically, the benefits of this include allowing doctors to leave the wards and attend training opportunities, such as teaching sessions, study days, and doing things that will help their training specifically. You may be wondering at what level do physician associates work at? Now, there are a couple of studies done in the UK in emergency departments, so in A&E, which have shown that the physician associates who work in this department um, work at an equivalent level to that of foundation year one and two doctors. So foundation year one and two doctors are doctors who have just graduated and are in their first two years of training post their graduation. And another benefit of PAs and MAPs is that they can provide a specific skill for a department and do that regularly. So this may be a specific procedure such as ultrasound cannulation and they can do the skill on the ward effectively because they're doing it so often they become very experienced and then they can provide training for doctors themselves on how to do these skills. So to recap, the benefits of MAPS and Physician Associates are the following. They are safe, they help to provide care in places that are lacking physicians and lacking staff, especially in an NHS which is overstretched and underfunded, particularly in a post-pandemic world. They can provide continuity of care to patients and staff. They can carry out specific skills and because they are there, they can allow doctors to be free to attend training opportunities. So one of the reasons for the debate is that although the literature does suggest that these are the benefits of MAPS and PAs, what recent surveys from trainees and from doctors have been suggesting is that these benefits are not really felt in everyday practice. This is where we come on to the potential risks and some of the concerns that doctors and other healthcare professionals share at the moment. So the first concern I want to talk about is the lack of clarity of the role of MAPS and PAs in particular. So when I say this, I mean that at present, there isn't really a clear understanding of what exactly physician associates do within the hospital or within the place that they work. There is no general consensus about what they do as their job is relatively new and also very varied amongst places where they work. Several studies looking at the opinions of healthcare workers themselves have showed that healthcare workers are very confused about the role of MAPS within the healthcare team. Um, this is even for people who have worked with MAPS in particular. Most people are un unclear about exactly what they are supposed to do and how much they can do independently and how much they need supervision. Some of the lack of clarity of the role also stems from the name itself. For example, if we look at physician associate, it is unclear what that really means. Now, interestingly, physician associates used to be called physician assistants. And the name itself has different connotations about what the role is. You may think that a physician assistant is there primarily to assist the physician. However, the name physician associate suggests more of a parallel rather than someone who is helping that physician in particular. So you can see why it's a little bit confusing for healthcare workers as to what they actually do. Not only is it confusing for healthcare workers, but it can also be confusing for patients as well. This has been reflected in the literature where often patients themselves have a really unclear understanding about who is seeing them. Sometimes patients can mistake physician associates for doctors and they think that they have been treated by a doctor 
when actually they haven't. The UK medical naming system is very confusing and there's a lot of jargon. For example, house officer, SHO, registrar, LED, locum doctor, SAS, consultant, there's loads of terms and it's very confusing. There's not really a standardised terminology for doctors themselves, let alone other healthcare practitioners. You might vaguely understand what a doctor is and what a nurse is, but even then there's lots of stereotypes about what a doctor looks like versus what a nurse. I know, for example, I get mistaken for being a nurse a lot because I am a female, so bringing physician associate into the mix just adds to more confusion. So the next concern I want to talk about is concerns regarding patient safety. I did speak about before how in specific studies looking at different departments where physician associates and junior doctors work, the literature shows that physician associates do work in a safe way. Recent surveys have shown that many healthcare professionals and many doctors themselves are concerned about the potential risks towards patient safety regarding being treated and being seen by MAPS, such as physician associates. There may be many reasons why doctors are worried about patient safety. One of the reasons stated is that people are worried about differences in numbers of years of training that physician associates have to go through versus doctors. Now, physician associate training is two years, whereas medical training is usually five or six years. So some people feel that there is a potential risk to patient safety where patients are being seen and treated by physician associates. Now, patient safety is obviously a really big concern for all healthcare workers, as this is one of the main reasons why we're even in healthcare. And although there are some studies that are looking at the way MAPS work in the UK, because it's a relatively new field, there isn't that much literature from the NHS. So this is definitely an area which needs more research. So the next concern I want to talk about is the impact on training and career progression for doctors. Many junior doctors feel that having MAPS and physician associates in the workforce are impacting on the training opportunities of junior doctors. Now this might mean that the existence of PAs on the ward or in the department may mean that there is more competition for training opportunities such as doing procedures or doing operations and many junior doctors feel that their opportunities are being taken away by MAPS and by PAs. Because PAs and MAPS are permanent members of staff, that they're there for a long time, that they may be able to develop better relationships with the senior consultants and things like that, and therefore they may get preference to complete certain, certain procedures over the junior doctors who only rotate very frequently because they are less well known. This reason many junior doctors feel that their training opportunities are being taken away and that this might impact on their ability to progress in their careers towards becoming a registrar and a consultant and so forth. On this similar theme some people feel that the reliance of PAs and MAPs on the workforce will mean that the NHS will rely less heavily on international medical graduates who are doctors who come from other countries. At the moment, the NHS has over 40% of international med medical graduates, whereas PAs in the UK are generally people who have graduated here. Another one of their concerns is about supervision of MAPS. Some senior doctors feel that they are already stretched when it comes to supervising their own junior doctors, so having to supervise physician associates and MAPS on top of that can potentially compromise patient safety because of the number of people that they have to supervise. To summarise, some of the concerns about medical associate professions working in the NHS are confusion about the role and the scope of practice, confusion about the names and misrepresentation to patients, potential concerns about patient safety, supervision and regulation, as well as lack of training opportunities and career progression for doctors, including international medical graduates. Now, I want to try to talk a little bit about why doctors seem so upset about this. You may know that many junior doctors and consultants have been taking part in strikes and industrial action for over a year. Generally, there is a lot of burnout amongst doctors in the NHS. Doctors are very unhappy about working conditions, pay, the state of the NHS. This is reflected by high levels of people leaving the NHS or leaving the country, leaving medicine entirely. There's also high levels of burnout, mental illness and absence amongst doctors in the workforce. Generally, doctors are very unhappy and unsatisfied. And the recent bringing to light of the issues surrounding MAPS is just adding fuel to the fire. 
But I think one of the benefits of this whole debate is that it is prompting a lot of actions such as clearer definitions of the roles of maps, outlines about regulation and career progression. Hopefully all these things will help to make the role of maps clearer and more effective so that they can actually be used as they were intended, which is to help an overstretched and overburdened workforce. I hope this was useful to give you a little bit of insight into this debate surrounding physician associates and maps. I think it's best if you do your own reading and your own research and see what you think about the topic. I will leave the link for some important important studies and some research papers that I think are useful for you to read. So thank you for watching, I hope this was useful. If you have any questions then let me know in the comments.